Hey y'all, and welcome to Pop's Place. It's good to see you today. I'm a day late on some of these videos. I had actually set out a schedule where I was going to make recipes up until Thanksgiving, so we'd be ready. We'd do our Thanksgiving boot camp, and we'd have it all put together. It'd be amazing, and it's still going to be amazing, but I had a little bit of a change of plan, so I was supposed to do sweet potato pie yesterday, and I'm actually doing it today, and hopefully we'll get it uploaded by tonight so that you'll have it, you'll have the recipe, and you'll be ready. I'm going to tell you, Southern sweet potato pie has to be my favorite pie of all time. It is a game changer. It's so good, so delicious, so perfect, and so simple to make. So I'm so glad you stopped by. Thank you for dropping in. Make sure you hit like. And subscribe and leave me a comment tell me in the comments what is your favorite pie for Thanksgiving and for the Christmas season I want to know exactly what your favorite pie is and who knows maybe I'll try it maybe I'll make one on video who knows what but thank you for stopping by we do appreciate you being a part of what's going on here at the community of Pops Place and we will be right back to show you some ingredients don't go away okay so sweet potato pie is a really simple pie the main thing that you're going to need, of course, you're going to need sweet potatoes. And this recipe calls for about two cups of cooked sweet potatoes. You can cook those any way that you choose. If you want to bake the sweet potatoes and then strip the skins, you can do that. Today, I'm probably going to just boil them and then uh, get my sweet potato out of that. And I've got way more than two cups there, but I bought some for dinner too. So just thought I'd go ahead and throw them out, you know what I mean? And then right there behind them, we have to have white sugar, just a little over a cup of evaporated milk, just a little more than three quarters of the can. You need two eggs, four tablespoons of butter, and then I do a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of vanilla, which that is my homemade vanilla back there, yes, and a teaspoon of cinnamon. And then of course, a few days ago, we made pie crust, and we still have the pie crust that I made a few days ago. If you look, y'all, it's still cute. Look at it. And we'll roll that out. Maybe I'll show you the crimping process when we get to that. But uh, anyway, those are the ingredients. That's what we're going to be putting together. And we'll get started over the course of the next few hours, and we'll put together a beautiful sweet potato pie so that all can enjoy. Not really sure what happened on the audio with these, but... Um, what we're going to do at this point is we're going to peel these potatoes. So, um, you know, just a standard peeler works and you can buy them at Walmart or wherever you'd like, but you can actually use these peelers in both directions to peel your potatoes. So doesn't take very long at all, probably a minute or so to peel a potato this way. Uh, and I do that first. I like to peel my potato with a decent uh, peeler and then I'll wash the potatoes after I've got them all peeled. That's really important. So um, I'm going to go ahead and peel two of these in this particular video and whatever's left over, I'll eat them for supper. But uh, uh, just to make sure that I had that two cups of, you know, cooked potato that I need for the pie. So, All right. So what we're doing is I'm actually dicing these potatoes. Now, what I like to do is cut them in half so that the half will actually lay flat on your surface. You'd, you'd be amazed how quickly a sweet potato will roll. And this is a very dense vegetable, so it's, it's difficult uh, to get good traction on it unless you can make it lay flat. So then what I'm gonna do is dice these in approximately a one inch dice, um, half inch dice to one inch dice, depending on what you'd like to do. And then I will boil these in salted water. That's about the size that you want. Uh, and again, it can vary. Some of the pieces will be smaller, some will be larger. Put them in my trusty saucepan. And basically, I'm just gonna put enough water to cover what I dice up. And at that point, we'll come back and we'll show you what we do with the cooked potatoes. Okay, so I have my diced sweet potatoes. They are in salted water. I put probably two or three teaspoons of salt. Just condition things a little bit and make it a little more um, palatable whenever it comes out of the water. These will take just a few minutes to boil down. It's probably one of the easier ways to do this. And you can do the same thing if you're making mashed sweet potatoes. You can do that with butter and with, uh, you know, your cinnamon and 
a little bit of brown sugar or if you like them savory you can go with salt and I like to throw in a little bit of cayenne pepper when I'm making mashed sweet potatoes but that's another thing that you can do when you're boiling them this way there's so many things you can do with sweet potatoes but we're stuck on pie today and this is going to be probably about twice as many sweet potatoes as we need for this pie but that's okay because I'm making tacos tonight and I might just do what I just told you mash up some of those extra sweet potatoes put a little cayenne pepper in there give them a little fire and a kick and have them along with my tacos tonight so that'll be um, absolutely great so anyway we've got these set to boil they will take you know a good 20 or so minutes we want them fork tender and I'll come back when we're ready to check on their progress okay so we are back in a familiar spot if you watch the apple pie video you know what I'm doing now I made homemade pie dough the other day enough for about three pies because the um, actually the apple pie that I made required two crusts so my recipe would make actually four and so basically now you look at there look at that dough sticking to my rolling pin like he's gonna be sassy can't believe it my goodness that that ain't gonna matter much because we're just gonna make sure we flour it down real good and basically what I'm doing is I am rolling out a piece of pie dough that is big enough for my pie pan and if you see spots in it that look like they're just kind of coming apart you know you like that like I literally just it stuck to my rolling pin that's all right we just gonna band-aid it back together everything gonna work out just fine we're gonna get it good enough big enough and basically I'm looking at my pie pan and it looks like it's gonna fit all right so I'm gonna set that aside and now I'm gonna pick up that pie crust and just roll it up onto my rolling pin and just ever so gently lay it into the pie pan now there are pies and I have baked a lot of pies in my time there are pies where you're gonna pre-bake this crust if you're doing a, a stovetop cooked pie like a chocolate pie you'd have to pre-bake this crust and at that point you would poke holes in the bottom of this with a fork and you bake that crust for a few minutes until it's a nice golden brown and then you'll add your cooked filling into this pie crust if you didn't your pie crust would be raw whenever you served it so you don't want to do that so basically what I'm doing is I'm going around the inside of this pie pan to make sure that there are no air bubbles because I definitely don't want that and then I'm just going to trim around the edges it does not have to be perfect don't rush because you don't want to rip your pie dough we got a lot of leftover pie dough on this one that's all right because I'm making another pie probably tomorrow or the next day we're going to do pecan pie in the next few days so that's going to be sexy you know what I mean all right extra dough get it up move it out of the way now some have asked me you really roll that out on your counter when it's my family yes I do if I'm cooking for other people I generally use a linen tea towel and I will roll it out with flour on a linen tea towel so that it's not directly in contact with my counter it's not that my counter is not clean it's just I try to be respectful when I'm making okay fries. so you're gonna see my tripod in here unfortunately that's just it is what it is but basically what we're doing is we're gonna crimp the edges by making a bird's mouth and then we're gonna push with our thumb on the other side that's the way you crimp a pie crust so not crazy but basically you're just gonna go around the edges and I'm pre crimping this because otherwise it won't bake that way now the other thing that you want to think about is how hot is your oven how hot is your oven gonna cook now that didn't do cute I'll have to fix that Let's try to fix it again don't have to be perfect but if you're making it for your Thanksgiving table you definitely want to take more time and this is all just pre gaming baby I am pre-gaming some Thanksgiving pies to try them out make sure they're all still good make sure I don't want to doctor the recipes up any at all can you see me hope you can see me make sure I got those crimps going in there good and that's what we're gonna do all the way around I know this when you bake a pie that pie crust is going to shrink up just a little bit that is par for the course it is part of it so you can expect a little bit of shrinking it's always good to leave a little extra around that rim so that you can push it looks real good can we do it 
Well, that's taking longer than I expected. This batch of dough was really tender, and that's okay. I'm, I'm used to working with different kinds of dough, but anyway, at the end of it, that's what you get, a beautiful crimped pie crust. And so then we're gonna whip up our, our ingredients that go in the pie when we come right back. First thing we're gonna add is a cup of white sugar. I put that in first, because I wanna make sure we get it in there in the base and we whip it up with these hot sweet potatoes. It's gonna be so nice. Then we're gonna add two cups of sweet potatoes. Now I'm gonna try to do this so that you can hear with the roar of this mixer, maybe we can turn it down. But basically, if you can see it, try to get it where you can see it. I'm gonna begin mixing those sweet potatoes with the sugar. At the same time, we're gonna go with about four tablespoons of butter because butter is sexy and we all need butter in our life. Be careful, don't let your mixer eat your, your knife like I'm about to do. All right, butter. So I'm gonna mix this a little stronger. I don't know if you can see what's happening there. It's always a good idea to stop and scrape down the sides of your mixture to make sure that all your sweet potatoes are actually in there and blended in and smoothed up because you don't want huge chunks of sweet potatoes in this. This is a smooth pie. It's similar to a pumpkin pie. So, um, but if I had to pick between the two, I'm going with sweet potato every time because it's better. Okay, so there's our sweet potato and it looks pretty smooth like we cooked it the right way. Now I'm gonna take a bowl and I am going to get my two eggs. I always make it my practice to crack my eggs into a bowl so that, you know, something's wrong with one of them. You don't, uh, you, know, you don't get a rotten egg into your pie and uh, ruin the whole thing. So now I'm going in with my two eggs and then we're gonna mix it a little more. With those eggs, I'm adding just over a cup of canned milk and um, about three quarters of the can. We'll come back and add that. Beautiful, light, and sexy. And we'll jump into some of our seasonings. It's generally always dry seasonings first, so I'm going to put my teaspoon of salt. That's a good one. We'll put our teaspoon of cinnamon exactly what you need there. Can't go wrong with cinnamon in one of these babies. And finally, now that I have gotten my dry ingredients out of the way, I'll also put a teaspoon of that homemade vanilla. Woohoo, baby. I can't even, I'm smelling the bottle right now and I am so happy, it makes me so happy. Okay, so pull this closer so you can see it. And we're gonna mix a little more. Don't go crazy when you first turn it on after the cinnamon goes in or you're gonna have cinnamon clouds everywhere. That looks pretty good and integrated there. Not bad if I do say so myself. And so now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna get the pie shell. We're gonna get a baking pan so that it doesn't um, you know, run over in the oven. There is that you know, once in a while chance that uh, you can actually run your pie over into the oven. So it's always good to bake it on a baking sheet so that if it does run over, it's just gonna run over on the baking sheet. So we'll be Okay, right. so I have my baking stone and um, I put a piece of aluminum foil on it so that if it does run over, it's a little easier for the cleanup. And now I'm going to fill up this pie shell with that beautiful filling. Isn't that delicious? Look, look at it, y'all. Y'all, that's, that's what sweet potato pie is supposed to be. That's what I'm saying. So I go in there with my spatula, get all them little droplets of goodness. All right. Now, this is going to go into a 350 degree oven for 45 minutes to an hour, basically, until it's kind of set. Now, it'll be a little jiggly in the middle when it's done, but it will basically be set. And then as it cools, it will coagulate a little better, be a little better condition. So um, at any rate, 
this is the gist of it. Now, when we come back, I'm going to bring the pie out the oven and we're going to give it a taste because I deserve it. I've worked hard today. I deserve a taste of pie. So, y'all, I'm an impatient person. I can't wait for this pie to cool. I have tried so desperately and I am torn it up right now. Mm. Y'all, it is so beautiful, so hot, so perfect, like you need to try this pie. It is savory, it is sweet, it is beautiful, it is complex, it's simple at the same time. You need to try it. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing and for sticking with us over here at Pop's Place. We are having so much fun doing this. I cannot wait. We're doing the next one we're gonna be doing is pecan pie. And I'm excited about that. Pecan pie, we're gonna do a pumpkin pie and I'm gonna do a water pie. And I think I'm going to do a chicken pot pie so that when you have that leftover turkey, you just swap out leftover turkey and you make a turkey pot pie. And it's to die for. It's so good. Same pie crust. Same thing. I'm just going to make it in a different dish. So anyway, please make sure you like and subscribe. Stay tuned. If you click that notification bell, you are always the first one to know when I upload a new video. And we're going to be doing it on the regular. So make sure you check us out. I appreciate it. And leave me a comment. What do you think? You think you're going to try this? You should. You totally should. It's so good. Oh my goodness. Y'all, even if you buy a store-bought crust and put this junk in it, yes. Mm. 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 So nice and hot. Okay, so I'm going to take a big chunk of this over to my mama because she needs some. And uh, I will talk at you later, but... Thanks again for dropping by Pop's Place. We always have a good time when you come. Make sure you come back and make sure you tell your friends. Love to hear from you again soon. Bye-bye.